This is liquid nitrogen, and this is an ice cube on zero. Three, two, one. Size does matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to scale this way up. Today's video is going to be about producing energetic videos. And so to do that, we're going to go outside. Come on. All right, when you're going to do an energetic video, something that's going to release a lot of energy, uh, you probably are going to be doing it outside. And working outside introduces a whole nother level of complexity when you produce a video. The first consideration is where are you going to do it? You need enough room. And you have to consider what kind of background you're gonna have behind you. You also have to consider local regulations. Do you have a nosy neighbor? You know, where are the kids? Where's the dog? Once you've got a good location, then you have to figure out when you're going to do this during the year. In general, if you're going to be doing something that produces a lot of flame and sparks, it's not a bad idea to do the video when you've got, say, wet ground and wet leaves around you, or even a slight dusting of snow. But it's much harder on machinery, on equipment, and on people to work in the dead of winter. You want to often work when you have shirt sleeves on, so that's a consideration. In addition, you want to think about what kind of time of day is going to be optimal. If you're doing a video that produces a lot of bright sparks and light, you might want to do it at night or maybe at dusk to get a better image. But if you're going to be using a high-speed camera like we do, it's very light dependent and you want good ambient lighting to be able to see because it uses a lot of light. On the other hand, if you are working in bright sunlight with its very high contrast between direct sunlight and shade, it can make videoing a little bit more difficult because of the high contrast levels. And overcast is a nice condition to work in. It's very predictable. In addition to that, you want to think about the level even of moisture. Are you going to have a likelihood of rain? You're going to do a long setup. It's going to rain. You better be able to pull your stuff inside. At the same time, Today, we had to consider humidity levels. As I'll explain the physics in just a little bit, you need high humidity for this type of demonstration. The other thing you want to consider is just the time of day relative to neighbors and your environment. If you need to do something at night, you want to think about maybe filming at 9 or 10 o'clock at night on a Friday or a Saturday rather than a work day, like a Monday or a Tuesday. And what all this means is that you generally want to have your video equipment, your plan, your people all ready to go and then follow the weather conditions so that you get the optimal time of day, optimal time of the year, and optimal weather conditions for doing the videoing. And that means everybody has to be kind of ready to go. And that can really be an imposition on the crew and everybody involved. That's what makes filming outside kind of difficult. Now, another thing to consider is when you're doing a video that consumes something that either took a long time to make or costs a lot. If you're going to test a rocket engine or you're going to be using 20 or 30 liters of liquid nitrogen, you want to make sure that you get the shot. What that often means is you want as many cameras as possible to film the video. It provides you a lot of different vantage points, different viewpoints. And so what we did here is we have the camera that I'm talking to right now is sort of the high resolution camera that's gonna show the impact. But we also have the high speed camera behind it. Over on the left, from my point of view or on the right, we actually have our phone set up as just a backup. And then we have a final camera that's set way in the distance to give us sort of an overfield of the view, in a, of the view of the entire field of view, as well as the camera that Alex is using right now, which is on a gimbal to give us the ability to move around and get different, different points of view. 
the addition of other cameras also gives you a bit of a backup. If something goes sideways with one of the cameras, you probably can still resurrect the shot. And another thing to consider is that the video itself is being made on using different types of systems. And you want to make sure that everything is going to work when you do the final video that's going to consume the product, the rocket engine, the liquid nitrogen. So you can't take, you know, oops, take two, oops, take three, you're going to run out of materials. So you often want to do a pre-video, a video of everything short of the final product to make sure that everything lines up, everything is in focus, all the equipment works properly. And then finally, when you're really sure that the rubber is going to meet the road, it's going to work. And so the first thing to consider, as I said before, was the weather and the location. And today we're using high humidity levels because we're going to be working with liquid nitrogen. And if you go on YouTube, you can see a number of YouTubers that have played around with liquid nitrogen, you know, freezing food or pouring molten metal into it or hot water, or pouring it onto a hot plate. The vast bulk of the smoke and the fog that's made by the liquid nitrogen is not made by what you're putting in it, even if it's hot water. What makes the fog is the condensation of the ambient humidity in the air that surrounds it. When you disperse the liquid nitrogen into the air, you create very tiny droplets of supercooled liquid nitrogen. And these generate little contrails of micro water droplets from the ambient air. That's what's producing the, the fog. So what you need to do is dispersion. And that's why what we're going to do in order to create the, the smoke or the fog cloud is we're going to impact this container of liquid nitrogen that we're going to place here in just a little bit with a water balloon. We're going to use a water balloon not because of the water, but because it's a nice disposable four to five kilogram mass that's going to fall down from about four meters up there. And when it reaches the liquid nitrogen, it's going to have a lot of kinetic energy and drive the liquid nitrogen into the air to produce the fog. Now, the problem with trying to do that is you have to be accurate. And when we thought about this, what if you poured the water out of a container or we were to try to drop it by hand? To move 12 meters down and be accurate to within a couple of centimeters means you don't want to introduce any kind of lateral velocity. And so the way that we're going to be releasing this is to use a hot wire technique. What I've done is on the end of this long board from the lift, I've placed a short length of nichrome wire hooked up to a high current source, our rocket igniter. And when I put the current through here, this gets red hot and melts through the little nylon loop that I have supporting this lead block down here as an example. And that will allow us to drop the weight without introducing any kind of lateral motion. So for your headphone users that hate the beeping sound, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a warning. There's gonna be some beeping and then on zero, I'm gonna hit the current and about a second later, we should see the lead block drop. So here we go, headphones, beeping, on zero. Three, two, one, zero. See? So that's what we're gonna do with the hot water balloon. So let's get set up for that and let's do a test run with the hot water balloon. Okay, headphone users, here comes the beep. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. It works, not bad. Now let's go ahead and we'll get the liquid nitrogen in here and try this again. I am cooking under this mask. All right, balloons ready, triggers ready. Put your headphones on, on zero, we'll release it. And that's about 16 liters of liquid nitrogen. On zero. 
five, four, three, two, one. How can you not love it? <laughs> that is really cool. Now we're gonna try this one more time with a different container and see if we get a little different pattern. And that's another thing you wanna do once you've invested in all the setup, sometimes it's good to have a couple of backups in case this one didn't work. But if it does, getting a second shot is never a bad idea because you've got it in the can and you can use it in order to produce a nicely edited video. So let's fill up another container of liquid nitrogen and try this one more time. All right, this is our second container and we decided to put a little metal grating on the top in order to make sure that the balloon ruptures and we distribute some of the water in there. We'll see if it has a better distribution of the liquid nitrogen, what kind of effect it has on the cloud. Okay, headphones. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. I think that was better. Whoa, <laughs> my shoe got a little cold. So it's kind of neat, it's a lot of fun. And when you have liquid nitrogen and you don't have any use for it in one of those cryostats or one of those doers, I, I should say, it's eventually gonna evaporate. So it really didn't cost us anything because I didn't have any plans for it. And so it was just the cost of a couple of these, these containers. So to sort of summarize it, when you're doing videos outside, big explosive type videos, consider location, consider the season, consider the time of day, consider the weather. And if it's going to be something that's going to consume a lot of materials, be prepared with many cameras, as many as you can, and also some backup plans in case, for example, your first test doesn't work. So hopefully this was kind of an interesting insight into the way that we do some of these videos and all the work that's involved in setting up something as simple as a little explosion of liquid nitrogen. And if you have any comments, if you have any questions, put them in the comments section below. I read them all, I'll answer your questions. And if you have any good ideas for future videos, we'll consider them as well. And please hit the subscription button. It helps out the channel, as I've said in the last few videos. It really helps us out if we're gonna to try to do interviews and site visits to get people interested in sharing their information with us if we look like we're a bigger channel, if we've got a bigger footprint. So stay safe, have fun with science. You have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll see you soon.